Hi, Gloria Brooks here from Nature Glowsy Science. I'm super excited tonight because I am going to show you the book that inspired me to want to learn living math. So what I mean by living math, what I now lovingly call math art, is a living connection with math where you see math everywhere. You see it in plant life. You see it in how animals move. You see it like in how heavy rocks are when you pick them up. It's this mathematical mindset, realizing that the universe is written in the language of mathematics, not just in textbooks. Yeah. Okay, so let's dive in. So uh, here is the book that first inspired me. Hi, I can see my reflection. Um, it's called, it's a time life or Life Science. I always call it Time Life. So it's Life Science Library Mathematics by David Bergamini. His name's not on the outside. Um, but I found this book, the real physical book, at a book rummage sale at, uh, I think his name was Pastor Gromov. And it was at my church in in Baltimore, Maryland, and it was the summer of 1997. And we had missionaries that had come from all around the world, and some of them set up booths and were selling things. And Pastor Gromov was selling old books. So I was browsing all these different books and picking up different books from boxes. And so I came across this book, which changed my life. Okay, and I'll show you why. It changed my life. I had never seen anything quite like this. Um, I mean, the cover is not that extraordinary. I mean, it's interesting. Um, but let's open it up. This is from archive.org. And I'm just going to thumb through it so you can just kind of see what the table of contents is. Now, you can also borrow this book. Hopefully, they allow multiple people to borrow this book at once because I've been looking at it a lot lately. Um, so here you can see the table of contents if you want to pause that and check that out for yourself. Uh, nice introduction, numbers a long way from one to zero. So, you know, I picked up the book and I was just thumbing through, thumbing through, thumbing through, and I just thought, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, it's really not used to seeing mathematics presented in this really interesting picturesque way. And it goes into the history of mathematics and I'm actually going to fast forward us to page 86, which is what changed my life, or page, uh, this page right here. So here you can see, uh, let me just see if I can show you, sorry, um, uh, two living cro uh, corkscrews. Um, let me, let's go to one page and let's zoom. Because I can't read this, guys. <laughs> All right. The Mathematics of Beauty in Nature and Art. And bam, I saw that. And I was like, what? I had never heard of this my entire education. And this was the year after I had graduated from college. So the picture that we just saw, two living corkscrews. A pair of delic delicately tinted morning glory buds spiral upward in the sunlight like two tiny waxen corkscrews, spirals, whether in plants or animals, seem to be a favored shape in nature or creation, whatever your worldview is. However, the graceful convolutions of these buds are only a transitory state. Sorry for the camera shake. For within another two days, they will disappear gradually unfolding into the familiar trumpet-shaped flowers of summer. So... <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Oh, so I got to scroll. But look at the detail. Whoa. <laughs> All right. And then it gets better. Okay. So here is an example of living math. You, you have geometry right here found in the natural world. So look at this image. This is a circular plant, the diatom, which I actually le lead my students in a study of diatoms in my marine biology online course. So the diatom a microscopic sea plant within the mosaic beauty of a stained glass window is a nearly perfect circle with ribbed, ugh, I can't read this, ribbed radii for added strength. 
Isn't that brilliant? I love this. I can't zoom in. Okay. So then we have this, which totally floored me. Uh, this is a triangular gem, the cross section of a semi precious tourmaline, which I, I used to have some tourmaline. Mined in Madagascar, reveals the stone's prismatic structure as a series of nearly neatly nested triangles. So here we have concentric triangles or triangles within triangles within triangles. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's all math. It's geometry. Okay, and then we have, let's see. But do you see, do you get the idea here of how math, it can be just so inspirational, so beautiful. Here we have uh, a cubed crystal. And I used to have a massive rocks and minerals collection. I used to have some uh, pyrite. So here we have um, a sample of pyrite or iron disulfide, often called fool's gold, occurs as a series of interlocking cubes. Common table salt also is made of cubic crystals. Now, rocks and minerals, I have a course which I need to yet publish. Um, I <laughs> get that online for you guys. But uh, I have a, an entire rocks and minerals course, and we do go into um, the geometries related to them. So you can literally learn geometry with rocks and minerals. How cool is that? Okay, so on and on it goes here. Um, we have the pleasing geometry of nature's creation. So here we have a, a you know, five-pointed star found in a starfish. And I'm not going to read all these. And I actually, I'm embarrassed to say that I have not read this book. And I'm going to. I'm going to read this book over the next week or two. Uh, and I'm going to dive in deeper. I find it hilarious that I did not read this book cover to cover. Six-sided snow. That's what uh, this image is here. Uh, a remarkable photograph shows several hexagonal snow crystals before they began to cluster themselves to form the familiar six-spoked flakes. Here we have six-sided cells, a honeycomb cross-section consists of a series of hexagons, which are not only strong, but also allow the most storage within the available space. So within my Math R online course, I do have um, a hexagons lesson. All right, and this blew my mind here. Do you guys know what this is? Shout it out. <laughs> this is the cross-section of a chambered nautilus. Um, and I ended up writing a story called Sea Maid, the Chambered Nautilus, where we uh, talk about the life history of the Chambered Nautilus. And, um, you know, the cross section is just extraordinary. This um, mid rib here, this, this tube is called a siphuncle, and it actually helps the animal regulate the gas levels in its chambers. And shell so that it can rise and fall in the water column while it's hunting at night. Isn't that awesome? So extraordinary. And this is also a growth spiral. Uh, so as the the um, the cephalopod, they're cephalopods, uh, not a mollusk, a cephalopod. They're related to octopus, squid. <clears throat> yeah, pretty amazing. So as they grow each season. Um, they squirt out this mother pearl or nacre, and then they move their bodies forward. Um, and then their body actually hangs out the very outside. Yep. So this has, uh, baffled and amazed scientists for eons. And, um, they don't always grow within the golden ratio. Sometimes there are perfect specimens. Well, I mean, I think they're perfect no matter what. But um, sometimes they can be found within the 1.618 or golden proportion, but not all the time. Okay, and then ah, one of my favorites here is um, this here, a spiraled sun, uh, spiral flower. So the diagram above reveals the double spiraling of the daisy head at right. Two opposite sets of rotating spirals are formed by the arrangement of the individual florets 
on the head in the head. So there are 21 spirals in a clockwise direction and 34 counterclockwise. This 21 to 34 ratio corresponds to the 2134 sequence in the mysterious Fibonacci number series, which is what I also teach that in my math art online course. These are also near perfect equiangular spirals. The mysterious mathematics of nature's spiral. So it goes on, but I just wanted to show you the inside of what first inspired me to study mathematics in connection with the real world and why I created my brand new guide for you called Math Learning Secrets. Um, here, let's leave it here on the Parthenon. So the, the Parthenon uh, can be found within the, uh, the golden ratio starting, I think, at the second to last step. And you can draw a golden rectangle around it. Pretty awesome. Okay, so click the link with this post and that will take you to Math Learning Secrets, which will teach you um, my five secrets framework, helping you get set up in your homeschool so that you can help inspire your kids to learn living math like this. You can let go of dry curriculum if you want. You can hang on to parts of it. You can hang on to all of it, some of it, none of it, whatever suits your homeschool style. Um, but math learning secrets, I think every is really great for any homeschooler that is looking to break free of math curriculum more and explore inspirational math found in real life around you through fun and real life connection. All right, so click that link, grab the Math Learning Secrets while the price is this reasonable. I'm not going to keep it the price this low forever, so grab it now. Also bundled with that, potentially as an add-on, is my Geometric Beauty of Snowflakes 3 lesson online unit study course. So you can grab that at the reasonable price that it's at right now. I'm not saying it here because the price may change by the time you watch this video. 